So today we're going to look at a pretty straightforward problem. We're just going to be pulling a block up a ramp. And really I'm just going to ask you what's the network acting on that block. So as usual, why don't you take a few minutes, see if you can solve this one on your own, press pause, and then uh, unpause it when you're ready to try it on your own. So remember, work is equal to force parallel to distance. So remember, it's not just times distance, it's force parallel to distance. So you do want to make sure you identify all the forces and make sure that the ones that you know of, that they are parallel to the distance. So for example, the most obvious one is this right here. This is uh, the force going up the ramp, right? And the distance, well, it's up the ramp, so that would be from here all the way up, and that's five meters. Okay, so the work by the guy, let's just go ahead and solve that because that's pretty straightforward. The work by the person pulling it up is just going to be 80, and then we're just going to multiply by that distance, which is 5 meters. Okay, so the work of the guy pulling it up, or the applied force, is going to be 400 joules. Now you do have to see if there are any other forces acting. Now obviously we have some gravity, right? And the force of gravity in this case is gonna is always gonna be pulling straight um, straight to the center of the earth. So what you are gonna wanna do is find out well what component of gravity is parallel to that distance. And so recall from you know many other previous videos that part of gravity is gonna be pulling this way and then part of gravity is going to be going down the ramp. And so this little piece right here, this is the part that you care about because that's the part that's going down the ramp. So recall this amount going this way is going to be that component of gravity, which is the weight, mg, and then we're just going to multiply by the sine of the angle of the ramp, so sine of 30 degrees. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Let's move this. Let's just move that out of the way. Boom, boom. And shrink this down a little bit. Okay, so the first work was the work done by me. Pulling it up the ramp, right? That's 400. And then we're going to say there's some work being done by uh, gravity. So say there's work being done by gravity, and this is the work coming down the ramp. So we're going to go mg sine theta, or sine 30, and again we're going to multiply by the distance, 5 meters. Okay. Now one thing to realize here is my distance is going up the ramp here, and my force of gravity, or the component, is coming down the ramp and those are in opposite directions so we do want to make sure that we show that just with a, a simple negative sign here that they're in opposite directions so that's going to go let's go ahead and sub solve this that's five kilograms times 9.8 times sine 30 uh, i can do that in my head that's just a half right 0.5 times five meters okay so that gives us the component of work coming down the ramp. Let me go ahead and calculate that here. Negative 122.5 joules. Okay, so that's the part of gravity coming down the ramp. Now there is a third force we got to worry about and that's the force of friction. So friction is also coming down the ramp. That's also opposing the force. So there's going to be some friction going down. So the last little piece we're going to do, let's go ahead and solve for this work of friction. Let's shrink this down. Uh, what color should we use? Uh, blah, blah, black. So here we go. So we're going to find the work done by friction. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be mu times the normal force. Actually, let me take a step back. Remember, this would be the force of friction times the distance. Okay, and as we said, the force is this way, distance is this way, those are parallel to each other. We do, again, since they're in opposite directions, we want to make sure we give it a negative sign here. All right, okay, and then friction we said is mu times the normal force. So mu, negative mu. The normal force on this problem, 
Remember, we had a component of gravity going this way. We have our normal force going up this way. And hopefully at this point, you're pretty good knowing that these two are the same. Okay, and then this little piece here is mg cosine of theta. So let's go ahead and write that out. So that should be mu mg cosine theta times that distance, right? We'll just write d here. And then we'll go ahead and substitute in. So my coefficient was 0.2, mass was 5, gravity is 9.8, cosine of 30, that's like 0.86 or something, and then times 5. But we'll go ahead and plug it in the calculator to get, get it all. So I'm getting negative 42.4. So I go ahead and check, double check my calculation, make sure I did that right. That's joules. So the last step is it is asking for the net work, right? So that's going to be all the works essentially added and subtracted from each other. So remember the first work, ooh, I can barely see that. That is, ooh, where is it? Right there, 400. So our net work, we had that work going up the ramp. That was 400 joules. Okay, then we had a uh, minus the force of gravity coming down the ramp, that was right here. So that's minus 122.5 joules. And then lastly, we're gonna subtract out this little guy right here, that was the work of friction, 42.4. Okay, conceptually notice when I'm doing work, I'm pulling it up, okay? So I'm adding energy to the system, that's why it's positive. Gravity is kinda of trying to pull back down so that's why it's trying to remove work from the system. And then lastly, we have friction, which is also removing energy from the system. So when I calculate my net work, I get 235 joules. Okay, hope that helps. Let me know if you have any questions.